let me just explain something to you. When you see people come up here and speak for the first time, you think, oh, it's, so good, it's okay for them, I couldn't do it. Okay, now, I used, to, I used to think that. Okay, when I first got involved in a business like this, I thought, you're never going to get me up there doing that. There's no way on God's earth I'm ever going to talk in front of people. And the reason was, really, it was my ego. I didn't want to look a fool. Do you know what I mean? I, did, I didn't want to do anything wrong. And so, and what the process is, is to do things slowly, do a little bit at a time. So sometimes I'll say to people, well, come up and, you know, just, just do five or ten minutes and see how you go. So the first time I ever had to speak in public, because I've been asked to be best, a best man, but I'd never be a best man because I'd have to do a speech. Do you know what I mean? And I didn't want to do a speech. And the truth is, purportedly, the second biggest fear in life is the, fe is the fear of public speaking. The first biggest fear is the fear of death, which you don't understand. Okay? So public speaking is a big thing, and it carries a big fear with it. So I was invited to introduce a speaker. Okay? So my first job as a speaker was to introduce a speaker, because he brings you on nice and steady and slowly. So all I've got to do is say, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mercure Hotel. It wasn't the Mercure Hotel because it was in Stoke on Trent, but we'll say it was the Mercure Hotel. Welcome to the Mercure Hotel. You're very fortunate tonight to come to look at your business opportunity. You're very fortunate to have a good friend and business associate. His name is Roger Malthus. Please welcome, put your hands together and welcome Roger Malthus. I thought, I took <laughs> 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 Paying attention. Come on, 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 come on. <laughs> <laughs> Paying attention. Okay. So that's what I've got to do. So for a week, I had diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> no, serious. I did. It worried me. I was worried. It was well, I was worried. And, I, and all I had to do, and I, I used Can to practice. Just turn the screen my, off. What thing I do is say, my name is Christopher Is that the controller? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just blah, blah, so, blah, blah, blah. so for a week, I'm going to, my name is Christopher Malley. Got to go. Just one thing. What speaks, I thought yeah. was a speech. What yeah. was a speech? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but it was a speech to me. Yeah. So I've got to come from the back of the room, and this guy, Roger Malpass, good friend, is at the back of the room. Yeah. So. I'm pacing up and down at the back of the room. I went to the toilet about five times. So, my name's Christopher Money, I've got it. And I walked, so I walked from the back of the room to the front of the room and I went, Roger! And <laughs> 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 I thought, you stupid in a bitching myself up, you, know, you fool, look, you look a idiot, and worse language than that. Do you know what you're telling and I beat myself up for a week. I did. And I didn't dare go back, you know what I mean? Because I felt such an idiot. And that's all I did. I, all the, I couldn't even remember my own name. I didn't even go, Chris, Roger! I just went, Roger! <laughs> and he came up, cool as anything. I'd like to thank Chris for that fantastic introduction. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my first introduction to public speaking. Okay. And when I got better, do you understand me? And better, and better, and better, and better, and better, and better. And I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never thought I'd ever be great. But the thing is, I was always great. I just didn't know I was. Does that make sense? And you are great. You just don't know you are. Because you've got your way. And I've got my way. And you can't be me and I can't be you. Do you understand me? All we can do is be ourselves. So being ourselves is the key to it. So we are happy for people to come up and, and, and speak as a learning process. So if you say, well, can I come and introduce you? And all you say is Chris. That's great. Because at least it's one word anyway, in front of somebody. There's no problem with it. We're here to help you. We're here to move you on. We're here to help you grow. To grow in stature and to grow in confidence. Okay? Because that's what the business is about. It's about creating leaders and leadership. So I'm fortunately when you when you when you do this, me and me and Pete get invited to speak all over the world, which is great because we don't have to pay for the flights or hotels or anything. You know what I mean? It's great. We don't even have to book them. We don't even have to drive to them. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pete told me something a long time ago. If you're going to travel, 
front of the plane, back of the car. Okay, <laughs> that's where you want to be. You want somebody drive you, and you want to be in first class. Okay, isn't it the way to go? Isn't it the, isn't it the only way to go? Okay, that's the truth of it. And so we get invited places. So I was invited. I was invited to Italy, and I got a call from a gentleman say, "Oh, you, you're going to be in Italy next week. I want to, I want to come and meet you and blah blah blah." And I said, "Yeah, no problem. That's great." And what I do is this: if anybody tells me that they're coming, I forget. I don't purposely forget, I just don't remember. Do you understand? Because whoever turns up, turns up. So I don't even know, because 20 people tell me that they're coming. And I can't think about the 20 people, I just have to think about the two that do. Or the one that does, or the three that does. Does that make sense? And then when they come to me and they go, hi, my name's John. I go, oh yeah, John, I remember the phone call. What I don't remember is the one from Bob who didn't turn up. I've had the phone call off Bob, but I don't carry him in the end. Does that make sense? I don't like yes. something you think you've got to be good for you. So <laughs> I went over to Italy, and, 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 and Baba was there. Uh, Baba came to Italy as well. So we had a good three or four days. We did some good trainings. We did some good meetings. I have to stay on Lake Garda uh, with, a, with, a, with a lake view. What a shame. Near a fish restaurant. And it was really sunny. <laughs> and there was a ferry to Simeone, which is really nice. And <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was really nice, so I had to suffer that for three days. Anyway, um, and while I was there, I met a gentleman who knew Peter Thompson. Okay, and I didn't know he knew Peter Thompson, but he'd already phoned me. It was, it was Van on the front row. So we were having a conversation, and he told me that Pete was a, was a, was a mentor of his in the past. Because there's one thing that, that me and Peter always do. We're always mentoring each other. We're always learning things from one another. We're always having conversations that will make each other grow. Because as long as we've known each other, I'm sure it's true for him as it is for me, I'll always hear something, say something that I've never heard him say before, what I didn't know every day for school day. Okay. So I was talking to Bannon and having a conversation. And I said, well, if you, know, if you come on Sunday, why, I mean, if you come from Italy, okay, well, why, why don't you come over and you know, do 10 or 15 minutes and let people know what you think of ISM and why you were involved in ISM, because he became a coach. Okay? Because he wanted to become a coach. And some of you guys may want to become coaches or presenters or trainers, but you don't think you can. Well, you can. Anybody can. And the good thing about ISM is you don't have to pay to do it. We'll take you from A to B and we'll take you up the levels and you know, we'll get you in a first class position or a first Premier League division if that's where you want to go. Okay? Because those are the sort of speakers that we develop in this business. So, we look for that somewhere. I'm going to clap them and prepare. Um, so in that conversation, I had a conversation with Van, and I said, well, you know, why don't you come? So we're very fortunate today that he did come. Now, I don't know what he's, he's going to be talking about, but I'm looking forward to hearing it. I'm looking forward to listening to it, and I'm sure I'm going to learn something from it. So please welcome Mr. Van Henley. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. It's really great to be here today see a couple of people that I've known, some longer than others. Peter is one of the lead, well, he's the leading authority in this country on product creation, and I was mentored by him, make, making a few products, because I'm coach, motivational speaker, and NLP practitioner. Now, there are many people who are here today that are already in the business. They've taken an opportunity, but there are people here for the first time. Opportunities. You know, there are people who will sometimes walk and stumble over an opportunity that get up, dust themselves off, and carry on as if nothing happened. They wouldn't even look around and say, what was that? I want to give you three pointers that I think would help you on your road to success. The chances that you take, the decisions that you make, and the changes that you embrace. Change is a big thing. We all need it. Have you heard of Charles Darwin? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Darwin said the species who live in an ever changing environment and do not change will become extinct. Whereas the ones who do change, not only will they survive, but they will prosper. I want to give you a few examples of people that I've met around the world. People who have taken these opportunities. 
and have succeeded. Let me take you to South Africa, first and foremost. I met a young man there. You see, I'm from the aviation industry. And this young man, he lived through the apartheid era. He was questioning me because I, I went down there playing a leadership role. He said, what's it like in the UK? Is it like here, you know? I said, no, 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 I'm not, uh, I don't even know what, what's going on down here, hear about it, blah, blah, blah. But you know, I'm from a different place and I came. The reason he asked me this was because I, there were 30 people. I was the leader of the pack and the only black guy. So he was looking at me a little bit, you know, how come he's, uh, the white guys are looking, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this guy, he told me his story, and that is why I became a coach. He said, man, when I took this apprenticeship, you know, I was a little bit afraid. I said to my friends, I'm going to go to Denel Aviation for an apprenticeship. They laughed at him. And I connected with that, because when I went for my apprenticeship with Rolls-Royce in Derby, I was the second man of my persuasion that got employed there. So I connected straight away with that. But he said, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. And he did. And he said, when he started, he found out that he could do as well as anyone else and better than some. I left that company, came back to the UK. I phoned uh, maybe two or three years after that and asked, how, how, how was Tabo doing? You know, the, the bright little guy. Oh, yeah, he's upstairs now. He's a planning engineer. Yeah. He found his potential. He put away all the, all the, the negative issues that he was being told, like, oh, you guys are untrainable. Your brain capacity is half the size of the Europeans and all that. Yeah. But he didn't let that worry him. He had a go. And he became successful because he took that, he embraced change. And that is what we all have to do. We have to embrace change. Now I'm going to give you a little example of how I see life. Let's take life as a big tree. And people will congregate around this tree. Let's call it the tree of life. And this tree is laden with fruits. And these fruits represent the opportunities in life. Some of the people come, you know, and they'll walk around and pick up a few fruits that's on the ground. It's easy pickings. Easy pickings. You can survive on it, but it's not the best. Then you get other people that'll come around and they see low-hanging fruits. And they can grab a few. And sometimes even have to stretch to grab a few. But it's better than the ones on the ground. And there are others who look up and see even better fruits towards the top where the sun reaches these fruits. And they're big and fat and juicy. So they want to get up there. And they start climbing. And some of them will grab a branch or two that's not too safe. And they fall flat on their backs. But you know what? The ones with the determination, they get up. And they climb. But they won't make that mistake again because they learned something. They're a little bit more careful the next time. But I want to, to, to say to you, some of you who are in this business will get to the top of that tree. But when you get to the top, I want you to shake that tree so some of the fruits will fall off for some of the people on the ground. Not because they're, they're you know, they, they might not just be able to climb. They may be disabled, whatever. So, as I say, some of us might not reach the top, but if you're aiming for the stars and you reach the moon, you're doing good. You're doing good. Now, as I said, I want to give you a couple more examples of people that I've seen that have made it. I'm from the aviation industry. Again, that's, I'm repeating. But there's a guy who came to the hangar to build an office. He was a carpenter. And after his work was finished, he was asked to stay on and help other people doing various jobs. He started off to help the, the vehicle mechanics. And um, after that, you know, he became a load master. The guy who looks after the, the distribution of the weight on an aircraft because you've got to load it right. 
Otherwise, you know, things will happen that you don't want to happen. And then he started to fly with the aircraft as a mechanic. Then he became a flight engineer. This is in the old airplanes, either the guys that sit behind the captain and the co-pilot with their own little panel, do fuel transfers, this, that, and the other. And this guy, as I say, he went for his test. We call it the check ride in Stockholm. He got 94%. Never been done since the 50s. So, not only did he become a flight engineer, but that guy is now flying an Airbus. He's flying an Airbus. So you see what I'm trying to tell you? Never say you can't. Because you can. And you can do far more sometimes than you think you're able to. I've been traveling for about 41 years. OK, I know I, you know, I don't look uh, old enough. But by the way, it was my birthday yesterday. I was 63 yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> my own mother was a great woman. We all think our mother's a great woman. But mine was because of self-belief. When I was about five years old, I had typhoid. I ended up in hospital. She herself was pregnant. And she left me with my godfather. And they didn't really look after me too much. I must have been playing in some dirty water somewhere. I contracted typhoid. So I ended up in the same hospital because she was in there with a little bit of diabetes. She was pregnant with my sister. Didn't know I put a sister at the time, but listen to this. We were in the same hospital. She used to come over to my ward, the children's ward, and visit me, make sure things are, you know, mothers. And one day she came in and there was a big mug, the old enamel mug with milk, and I didn't drink it, and there was a big fly in the thing, you know. Yeah, that's why I didn't drink it. So, I was in there for about three weeks, and my backside was like a second-hand dartboard from injections, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, one day she came in, and this little boy, he was going. His little heart was beating. And he looked up and he saw his mother. And he goes, Mama, Mama, Mama. And this woman, can you imagine the emotion that this woman was going through because her son was, was going to die? The, in those days in the Caribbean, they'd put a red blanket at the bottom of your bed when you're going to die. This little boy's red blanket was at the bottom. The reason being, They'd cover you with this so that the porters could see who to wheel away. This boy's red blanket was at the bottom of the bed, waiting. She came in there. Most mothers would have just either got down on her knees and prayed or, or cried. But no, she went into the matron's office and she said, I'm going to take this kid out of here. <laughs> the only thing you're going to take out of here is a dead body. But she didn't let that prognosis become her reality. That woman took that kid home and made him well. Made him well. And you want to know something else? I was that boy. Wow. That's where I'm coming from. You see, my mother, when she died, she left something in me. Not for me, but in me. And it's very important what you leave in your kids. She left something in me that the coffin could not hold, that the grave could not contain, and that was her spirit, her determination. In that little story, you will find decision-making, determination, defiance, because if she didn't make the right decision, I would be standing here telling you this story. Defiance of the medical profession. We all think they're gods, you know, they can fix anything. But she went where there was no path to follow. But she cut a path and left for other mothers to follow. And that's where I'm coming from. She was a great woman. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you are here for the first time to take this opportunity. And I think it's a very good move. Because, you know, 
How many of you that uh, perhaps told someone that you're going to come and take a look at this opportunity and they tried to put you off? Can I see a show of hands? So you got over the first hurdle, right? You got over the first hurdle. These people around, you know, they say, oh, you never make any money out of that. I know somebody who lost money, yeah, it's a pyramid scheme, this, that, and the other, you know. And so you start to tell yourselves these stories. This is how it works. You saw the video in the beginning. The guy just didn't get it. Just didn't get it. And so, in life, we have to listen to ourselves. This guy I talked about earlier, who told me a story in South Africa, was the reason I became a coach, motivational speaker, and an NLP practitioner. I was helped on my way by Peter. We all need people in our lives that can help us. You know? And ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you that this is the opportunity of a lifetime. I, I, I was looking at this silver phenomenon for a long while now, but I didn't know where to get the silver. I just saw that HSBC was buying millions of this stuff and blah, blah, blah. So when I saw this opportunity, bam, mm, I was in. Wow. Straight away. No question. No questions. So I want to say to you today, choose wisely. I want to give you three points which I think will help you on your way. It's the chances you take, the decisions you make, and the changes that you embrace. Embrace change. Embrace change. I'm from this, uh, I was born in Jamaica, I've lived in this country for 50 years, traveled the world, met people, associated with people from different backgrounds, different religions, different social systems. And it's, it's a great life, great life. But you know what, you see this, this business? I'll soon be quitting that life and, and I'll be having a greater life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I've only just started, but I know where I'm going. Mm. I can Why see not? the future. I've got vision, mm. not television. <laughs> I don't have one of those in my house, truly. I don't have one in my house. It's a television. <laughs> That's what I call it. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make this short because I have another engagement later on. So all I want to impress upon you, not impress you, but to impress upon you that this is a great business. Take that second step. You've taken the first step. Trust me, this is good. And I wish you all the success in life. Thank you. The interesting thing was, I was just sitting there next to Van's guy, and when he said, I'm going to quit that one and go to this one, he said, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> and you can, tell, you can tell he's an entrepreneur, because when I said, you can come and speak, he said, what about the fee? <laughs> just give me 50 quid, Van. <laughs> so, well, that was fantastic. One more round of applause for Van. Now, uh, obviously, some of you guys are perhaps new to the business. You don't know, you don't know about the, the Achievers Edge. It's in the back office. Some of you know it's there, but you don't use it. I suggest you do. And well, today, we're very fortunate because we've got the Achievers Edge live. Okay, because Peter Thompson is going to give you some information, and hopefully that information After will 30. tell you After you 30. should be listening on a, on a weekly basis, okay, and if it's on a daily basis, okay, as much as you possibly can, because you've got all the back issues there. Now, as I say, me and Peter have known one another for 20 years, we've done lots of business together, we've made lots of money together, we've never had any contracts, we've never had anything paid for, we've just done everything on through your trust and love. So please welcome the author of the Achievers Edge and my very good friend, Mr. Peter Thompson. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. How are we all this afternoon? Great. There's, there's a bit you missed out there. You have to say, when somebody says, how are you, you say how you are. Obviously, you don't say fine, because that stands for feeling inwardly negative every day. 
So we don't want to be saying that sort of word. So we want to be saying great or fantastic or awesome, however you feel is good for you. And then we want to finish it with another bit, say, thank you for asking. And people will be amazed, right? And then you say, and how are you? So let's start again. How are you this afternoon? I'm, I'm awesome. Thank you for asking too. Oh, you see, what a system we've got. Now, when you do this with people, you will change the dynamic of the conversation immediately. Because most people, when they say, how are you? A, they didn't want to know. And if you start and tell them, they'll run away. Imagine you say to somebody, how are you? And they sit down, I'll tell you. Right? You don't want that, do you? Well, I, I test this. I've tested this. When someone says, how are you? Do this, go. Rah, rah, rah. Right? And they won't even notice. And the reason is they didn't ask really in the first place. So make them realize they've asked you by saying whatever good woody word you want, fantastic, thank you for asking. And suddenly you will connect with them on a different level. Now, before we get into this stuff, and I'm going to be with you for about 45 minutes or so, I have to tell you this one thing. I always like to say this to you, as you know, is I don't have all the answers. Right? I've been in business, I'll say as Van said, I've been in business now for 43 years. I mean, look, it's not possible. Is it? How, how can they? I'm even older than you, right? <laughs> but I don't have the answers. But what I do know is the answers are out there. And all we have to do is be lifelong learners. We have to learn every, I came down on the train earlier on today from Leamington Spa. It was a ram the train was. So what was I doing on the train? Yes, I was connecting with people. I was talking to somebody, a young lady who was opposite me, but I was listening again. I was listening to Joe Polish and Dan Sullivan talk about freedom, because why not? We have to constantly learn new stuff. The world is moving so fast that yes, the old stuff is good stuff to use again, but we always got to be pushing that knowledge boundary of ourselves. Does this make some sense? I'm sure it does. Right, so what I'm going to talk about today is a business, is creating a business and a life of choice. Isn't that what we want? Total and utter choice all of the time to do exactly what we want, when we want. We'll talk today about freedom, the freedom to have the things that we want. And I'll change a few thoughts for you on that. Sorry, Pete, what did you do with the young lady? What did I do with the young lady? I, actually, she was, um, she was in a wheelchair. Because one of the places to sit on trains is, if it's not occupied, is the table that's opposite the one that's for people with wheelchairs, right? Because A, there's lots of space usually and not always very occupied. But when I got on, she was there. There was a lady there and she was in a wheelchair, but there was an, everybody had avoided the seat opposite her, right? So I thought, well, I'll sit there because I can talk to her and she didn't speak a lot. But I was able to help her with, I asked permission first because, you know, sometimes people want to do their own thing, don't they? But I asked if I could help her and I was able to help her along the journey. And uh, it was a real great experience, I have to say. Uh, it, was, it was good to do that. It, was, uh, it makes, sometimes makes you feel good. Maybe you shouldn't do it for that reason, but I'm a great believer in that's what we do everything for. We do things for a feeling, don't we? Um, you know, I don't believe there's anything about altruism, you know, talk about altruism, doing things for other people. I don't think it's true. I think we always do it for ourselves. And we always do it for the feeling that it engenders in us. And as long as we're honest with ourselves and we recognize that, then we can do even more for other people. Because let's recognize we do it because we want to, you know. And there's been lots of studies about why people do what they do and why they want what they want. And all of the studies about people want what they want, they, they never come with any answers. But I'll tell you what the answer is, because it's the truth of it, is we want what we want because we want it. I mean, that's it. You know, you want a different car, have it. You know, you want to buy silver and have coffee, have both. Why not? You know, you can, you can do what you like, can't you? We're all grown-ups, we can do whatever we like in life. And why shouldn't we? That's the freedom that we want, the freedom to choose all of the time what we do all of the time. And there's four freedoms, and we'll talk about them later. Um, this is one of my favorite expressions. Every time I come and talk here or anywhere in the world, I always use this expression. I found it in a book. The book is called Switch, How to Change When Change is Hard. And it's one of the best books I've read. And it's by two authors, American authors, called Chip and Dan Heath. Chip and Dan Heath, Switch, How to Change When Change is Hard. Now this expression comes from there, resistance is created through a lack of clarity. 
And this is so true for us individually and for anybody we want to introduce to the business. And what we tend to do is this, and I know I've made this mistake, is when we talk to people about a business opportunity, sometimes we try and give them too much information. And in giving them too much information, they have no clarity. And as soon as they have no clarity, they have resistance. So the way to avoid that is to stop giving people too much information. Is give them a little bit of information, and as Chris said, invite them. Yeah? Do the list, do the contact, do the invite. I mean, as Chris mentioned, I think it's more like 25 years, quite honestly, that we've been working together. And Chris and I are always talking about ideas. We don't very often talk about people. We don't very often talk about events. We talk about ideas, things that we can work with, that we can change ourselves and change the people that we work with as well. And I think that you'll find that's the difference in the conversations you have, that the people you talk about ideas with are the people who are succeeding. The people who are talking about people are the people who've got their mind in the wrong place. Right? The vast majority, the 95%, who are just wound up about the exploits of so-called celebrities. I mean, who gives a whatever word you want to add on the end of there, <laughs> right? I mean, who cares, right? And then other people are talking about events all the time, things that have happened. The, the past is a library. It's not somewhere to live. It's just a place to go to visit occasionally to just remind yourself of a lesson you previously learned. Isn't that so true? We want to live in the now, in the present moment, yeah? Chris and I, uh, some months, maybe even nearly a year ago, we went to the Troxy. Do you know the Troxy? Yeah, Troxy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Troxy. Yeah, absolutely. We went to the Troxy. That was about two and a half thousand people. And they were there for two and a half hours to listen to Eckhart Tolle. And Eckhart Tolle, Master Eckhart, is the author of The Power of Now, one of the best-selling books in the world, right? The Power of Now, living in the moment. And I sat there in the balcony uh, with Chris and some other friends listening to Eckhart Tolle for two and a half hours. And it was the day that the clocks changed. It was that time of year. And uh, I don't know if it was, it might have been last November then, perhaps it was that time. And when uh, he'd finished speaking, I, I looked at, in fact, I don't wear a watch, I looked at my phone and the time seemed wrong to me. I felt like an hour and a half had gone, but two and a half hours had gone. So he must have had me so tightly in the now in this conversation that time distorted. And that's what happens, isn't it, when we live in the now. You know, tomorrow is just people worry about tomorrow and they worry about what happened in the past and we can't change it. You know, let's make sure that we stick in the now. Uh, so if we get this clarity for ourselves of where we're going in life, how we're going to go there, why we're going to go there, and all those questions we can ask ourselves, and we get clarity for people who might be interested in the business, then that's really going to help us because you're going to reduce resistance by giving people clarity. And I found the easiest people, way to give people clarity is not tell them too much. You know, the more you tell people, the more you confuse them. Right? But keep it easy, keep it simple, just keep it short. Let those who know explain it to the people you want to explain it to. You know, if I'm in this business, as you know, I don't talk to people about it, I introduce them to Chris. Right? I can talk a bit about silver, but not as much as Chris can. I can talk about multi-level and network marketing, referral marketing, but not as much as Chris can. Because right? he knows better than I do. So why would I want to talk to them about it and confuse them? Yeah? Why would you want to talk about it and confuse them when you've got Chris to do it for you? Doesn't that make some sense? Doesn't it just? Okay, so resistance is created through a lack of clarity. Whenever you get resistance in yourself to taking an action, it'll be because of lack of clarity. They haven't got the list, it isn't written out, or whatever it is you know, that Chris was talking about there with the system and the process. Yeah? So have this expression in the forefront of your mind. Maybe you know, keep it in your phone or put it on your desktop or write it on a piece of card you see regularly until it becomes a habit-knit part of who you are. So whenever you find yourself resisting, you realize it's a lack of clarity, sit back, think for a moment, work out how you can get clear. As we've got some new people here today, I wanted just to share this idea with you about perception. I'm going to have some fun with this little exercise we do together, and some of you have played this game with me before, but it'll be good for those who haven't and for those who have as well. I'm holding in my hands a tea tray. Can you see this tray at the back? 
So you're as crazy as I am then, okay? That's good news. So we've got this tea tray. It's wooden. It's black. It's shiny. It's got a dragon design on it. It's a sort of oriental thing, right? It's got holes either side for lifting it, and it's holding teacups. Beautiful thing. And it's for sale in a mid-range department store. A sort of a Debenhams or a Lewis's, that type of store. If you've got notes, and I hope you bring papers to these events, and if you haven't, use, use your phone or whatever device you use to capture information, please write down or commit to what price is that for sale at. This, don't shout it out, just decide for yourself. What price is that tray for sale at in that mid-range department store? Yeah, okay, we've got an idea, we've all committed. Okay, so who's got about five pounds? Anybody got about five pounds? No, obviously described it well today then, okay. What about ten pounds, thereabouts? Oh, a oh, couple of people with cheap seats over here, I see. Okay, fair enough then. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't know there were cheap seats here, Chris. Oh, well, okay, I thought we were in the silver business, you know. Right, we were on the wealthy seats, right. So, what about uh, the 20 pound-ish? What about 30 pound-ish? Yes. 40, now put your hands up, because I have to see the numbers. How about 30 pound-ish? Where did we say 40 pound-ish? Oh, more at 40. What about 50? 60? What's more? 70? You know this is an auction, by the way. Okay. Um, <laughs> you've got the tray, Chris. Okay, we've got the tray. Right. Who's got over 100? Anybody over 100? How much, Seraphine? 200. 200. How much? Yes. 250. 250. Going what? Now, how much? 500. 500. Five, oh, somebody brought a wealthy friend today. Okay, so 500 pounds. Now, we've gone from 10 pounds to 500. It's the same tray. Ooh. What about if we take that same tray and we put it in a car boot sale? It's brand spanking new. It's brand spanking new, but now it's in a car boot sale, right? Please write down or commit how much is that for sale at in the car boot sale. Go, no, don't shout. Write it down, commit in your mind, right? How much is it for sale at in the car boot? The gentleman at the back that was 500 pounds, how much now? 600. 10 pounds. Just, he's a turncoat, isn't he? I mean, look, a couple of seconds from 500 quid to a tenner. Who's got less than five? You see, we understand car boots, don't we? Who's got, who's got a pound? Who's got a, we, we know the deal, don't we? Is it? It's gonna, it works, you're not gonna pay more than a pound for it in a car boot sale. Okay, brand spanking new, still the tray. Third time lucky. We're gonna go to Knightsbridge. It's gonna be for sale in Harrods. You get to take it home in a green and gold bag and look posh to all your mates. Right? You won't even use it for teacups anymore. You'll keep it on the sideboard with the price tag still on it. Just so they know how much silver you got. Or didn't have, because we spent some. So how much, commit, don't shout, how much is it for sale at in Harrods? The same tray, brand spanking new. Have a think in your mind. Right, I'll start the bidding at 300 pounds. Who's more than 300? Okay, more than four. More than five? Six, seven, eight, nine. More than a thousand. Oh, more than 2,000. Wow, still going strong. More than, how much? Two and a half. You used to look so much like Labby Sifri. Have people told you this before? I'm sure they have, haven't they? Okay, two, two and a half thousand. Five thousand pounds. How much? Two and a half. Ten thousand pounds. Twelve. Are you just bidding? You play. You're messing about. Okay. Here's the point then. We've got from five pounds to five thousand pounds for the same tray described to the same market at the same time in the same words. Why did that happen then? What happened? Perception. Yeah, there's another word, another word. Sorry? I tell you the word. Brand. The brand of the supplier. Now, this works with information. The brand of the supplier of the information will determine how the information is received by the recipient. What's your brand like? Will that make a difference? You bet it will, won't it? Right, the way that you talk to people, the way you are, what are the factors in your personal brand? What would be a factor? The way you dress? A big factor, wouldn't it? You know, if I'd come here in my green dress, sorry, a green dress, I didn't mean to say that. Um, if I'd come here in a green dress today, would it have changed the message? 
Slightly, I would have thought so. Absolutely right. If my voice was squeaky, would that change the message? Of course it would. Of course it would. Don't laugh at me. Right. You know, that deeper voice has got more authority, hasn't it? You know, we've got to use that deep voice, right? So we've got to use that deep voice and that authority. But the way you dress, the way you speak, the way you've educated yourself, the fact that you turn up to these meetings is part of your brand. It's what separates you from those who say they will from those who do. Isn't that the difference? So the, being the person who does things rather than the person who says they do things is part of your brand. So I would suggest at some quiet moment, walking down the street, listening, lying in bed, having a bath, in the shower, whatever it might be, ask yourself that question. What are the factors in my personal brand? And how well do I score? And if I'm not scoring well enough, then I've got to take personal responsibility for every result that I have in my life. Does, do you know the name Brian Tracy? Yes. Yeah? Uh, Brian is actually a friend of mine. On his latest program, uh, which is The Psychology of Achievement, there's a new version out. On the very first CD, or first recording, it is out on CD, he mentions me in a process for knowing how to achieve what you want in life. And if I get time, I've got it on one of my slides, but I'll rush through to make sure that we get there. And I learned something from Brian years and years ago. And he said that what you have to do is you have to say to yourself, I like myself. And you have to know that, and that's got to shine out of you, that level of self-esteem. So let's try it together, just quite simply, don't go, go crazy for the moment, just go, I like myself. A little stronger. See, we love this stuff, don't we? This is what we do. And again, once more, I like myself. I used to go into, before I had the chauffeur, I had the chauffeur for eight years, right? Um, and that just changes whole business dynamic. You turn up in business with the chauffeur, the deal's done, right? My chauffeur, his name was Peter as well. He used to get out, he wouldn't let me get out of the car. He didn't like me getting out on my own because he wouldn't let him do his job, right? He used to come round, he'd open the door, he'd give him my jacket, I'd put my jacket on, give him my briefcase. I'd walk in, the deal's done. Right? He used to come shopping with me. Right? He used to walk one yard behind me with his cap on, just for the crack, just for fun. He used to go with my wife shopping to Sainsbury's, right? He used to push the trolley with his hat on, just for fun. You know, this is what life's about, isn't it? It's having fun, isn't it? Just having so much fun. But before I had Peter, I used to drive into work and I used to do this, just go, I like myself. I used to get out and slam the door. I used to get electric shock right off the door until I realised one day it wasn't the door shocking me, it was me shocking the door. <laughs> right? And the second thing that Brian said was, you have to say this. You have to say, I am responsible. So it's, I like myself, I am responsible. Come on, together now. I like myself, I am responsible. That's the deal. It's, it's fun, isn't it? It's so, I heard this little mantra of Chris we were in an event somewhere, I can't even remember where it was. Oh, it was in Stoke. That's right. It was, yeah, it's usually in Stoke. And Chris was saying to do it, and he got everybody chanting this. I thought it was just brilliant. And I use this. If my mind wanders off somewhere and I want to bring it back, and it was the four stages that Chris says, he says, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wise. I mean, isn't that just beautiful? I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wise. I'm happy. Come on then. I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wise. I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wise. I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wise. What better programming could we have than that? And you know in there is the two most important words in the English language? I am. I am. Because everything you say after the words I am program and confirm your identity. And it's your identity that will drive your actions. Because people will never consistently do who they aren't. Makes some sense? Think about it. People will never consistently do who they aren't. And who we are is our beliefs and values. In other words, it's part of our identity. So once we start saying, I am something, then that is confirming that's your identity. Uh, I am a writer. Guess what I do? I write. Surprise, surprise. Right? I am happy. Guess what I do? Happy stuff. Right? I am wealthy. Guess what I do? 
wealthy stuff. I mean, you, you can't say I am something else and expect the outcome. You've got to have the I am bit first, haven't you? So if you ever you want to be something, start saying I am it. You know, this is why when uh, Chris talked about the lottery and people win the lottery, I heard about this one guy. It's a true story. My friend uh, Jill Fielding. Do you know Jill Fielding? She was on The Secret Millionaire. You know Jill? She's a, I'm in business with her. And Jill was telling this story about this guy who won just over four million on the lottery, right? And he was car mad. So he would buy a car, a big new car, right? And three months later, he'd sell it. Right? And of course, he'd lose money on that. And he kept on doing it, buy another big car and sell it, another big car and sell it, another big car and sell it. And at the end of two years, he had no more money. He was gone. Four million was gone. You know the sad thing? He couldn't drive. He couldn't drive. He, did, he never drove any of them. Right? As Chris said, he, he was doing it to impress other people. Right? That's right, not enough, thank you, beautifully said, not enough education. Not enough education. And it's the same with prisoners when they escape from jail, isn't it? What happens within a few days? They go back. Why? I tell you why. They planned to become free, they didn't plan to be free. You see, hear those verbs. If you, the plan to be is I am. So they didn't say I am free, they just planned to become free. That's becoming free is climbing over the wall. Yeah. Being free, that's different. Yeah? Becoming rich, it's easy in the UK. There are so many people who say they want it, they never do what it takes to get there. Being rich, different game. So we have to become it and be it, don't we? And remember, you will never have it till you be it. Because the deal is be, do, have. Not have, do, be. You've got to be that person first. In your mind, in every fibre of your being, you have to be the person you want to be. What's that famous expression, be the change you want to see in the world? Why? Because you have to be it first. When you be it, then you'll do it. And when you'll do it, you'll have it. It's that way round. Don't anybody let you kid you the other way around. And it's so simple. We just have to be. I've got a, a slide later. It says this. It says, live your life as though all your dreams have come true and challenge reality to catch up. Isn't that beautiful? I wish I'd said it originally. It's a guy called Dan Lee Dimke. I, I've got a slide. I'll show you later. Okay, but we'll, we'll say it once more. Live your life as though all your dreams have come true and challenge reality to catch up. What a, that's a beauty, I just love it. Okay, here's a couple of things. Where am I time-wise? Am I I'm okay time-wise? Okay, the elimination enigma. This is something I've been working on in my mind for a while and something again Chris and I have been talking about. We had a week together in Spain uh, last year and I'm sure we'll say it again, uh, this year. I'm sure we'll do it again same next year. And we just talk and talk and talk about these ideas. And I came up with this idea, the elimination enigma. I've been working with this, so this is a work in progress. And I was thinking about why are people successful? What is it that makes them successful? And I realise that very often what it is, it isn't that they get more stuff, it's they get rid of stuff. They eliminate the stuff they don't need. Because they're perfectly capable of being successful with what they've already got. They don't need anything else. Right? They've already got it, they've already got the power, they've just got to get rid of the doubt. Does that make sense? They've got the time, they just get rid of the distractions. Yeah, it's, uh, we saw it on the, the video. The, the guy was saying, I thought that, I've got to have a copy of that video. The, the guy that was rapping earlier, I thought that was genius. Right? When you talk about Facebook and Twitter and whatever, yeah, it's fun, but it's just a displacement activity. It's just using it instead of doing the real stuff, isn't it? That isn't life. That's just a record of life. It's like I saw years ago, you know the footballer Maradona? Before his name was destroyed by the hand of God thing and all that stuff that went on and drugs and things. He was a genius of a footballer as a young man. I saw him when he was 17 years old play at Wembley against England. And I'm not a great football fan, but I went with some friends to see this. And the ball would come over, he'd lift his leg higher than his head. And he was like got glue and, he went, choo, choo, and off he went. It was just amazing to watch. But I noticed one thing about him. Every time he got close to goal, somebody would elbow him. Or if he got closer, they'd kick him or trip him over or push him. And it, but I noticed something else that didn't do that to the referee. Because the referee just keeps score. The linesman just waves a flag. 
But the people in the middle of the pitch trying to score, they're the ones who get kicked. And it's just the world checking you serious. It's like paying tax. The amount of tax you pay is only a measure of how good you are or how bad your accountant is. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's all it is, isn't it? You know, that's, that's all it is. I remember there's a guy I knew down in Devon and he was bemoaning one day and he said, my bank manager's a so-and-so, I won't tell you the word he used. He said, every Saturday morning I get a letter from him reminding me about the 20 grand I owe the bank, right? And I said, what do you do? He says, oh, it, he said, it destroys my weekend. I said, it destroys your weekend? I thought it would make your weekend. He said, how do you mean? I said, the bank trusted you enough. They thought you were good enough to give you 20 grand. And they keep reminding you how good you are by writing about it. I mean, wow. What a shame it wasn't 100 grand. Because you get that letter and go, yeah, I'm worth 100 grand. You see, it's when you owe the bank, they've got the problem, not you. <laughs> Isn't that true? I remember hearing this joke, you have to forgive me because I heard it from a Jewish guy and he said it in a Jewish accent, so I'm just going to tell you what he told me. And he said there was a Jewish guy and he was talking to his wife and he was, he was moaning, he was groaning. And she said his name was Jaime, you know, forgive the, the stereotyping. But, and she said, Jaime, what's wrong? He said, well, I owe Jacob 500 pounds and I can't pay him. She said, hang on. She went, she opened the window. She said, Jacob, Jaime owes you 500 pounds, he can't pay you. Slammed the window. She said, let him worry. <laughs> It's true, isn't it, right? It just tells us how powerful. You've got to get your head right. Now, I've got something special for you. I've got a new coaching model. This is the most fantastic coaching model you ever saw in your life. You're going to take this away. You're going to use it with your team and with yourself forevermore. It's one of the best techniques I've ever seen for personal development. And we could, can we switch the top lights out at all? Because it's a video. Dr. Switzer? Uh, yes, C come in. I'm just, just washing my hands. Uh, I'm Catherine Bigman. Janet Carlisle referred me. Oh, yes. Uh, still being uh, very delighted in a box. Yes, yes, that's me. <laughs> Should I lay down? Oh, no, 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 we don't, we don't do that anymore. Just, just have a seat. And uh, let, let me uh, tell you a, a bit about our, our billing. I, um, I charge $5 for the, for the first five minutes. And, and then absolutely nothing after that. How, how, how does that sound? <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> Too good to be true, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, I can, I can almost guarantee you that that our session won't last the full, uh, the full five minutes. Now, um, <laughs> we don't do any insurance billing, so you would either have to pay in, in cash or by check. <clears throat> wow, okay. And, uh, and I, I don't make change. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and go. <clears throat> go. Well, tell what? me. Tell me about the problem that you wish to address. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I have this fear of being buried alive in a box. <laughs> I just, I start thinking about being buried alive and I begin to panic. Has, has, has anyone ever, ever tried to, to bury you alive in a box? No. No, but truly thinking about it does make my life horrible. I mean, I can't go through tunnels or be in an elevator or in a house, anything boxy. So what, what you're saying is you're, uh, you're claustrophobic. Uh, yes, yes, that's it. All right, well, uh, let's go, Catherine. I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, say two words to you right now. I, I want you to listen to them very, very carefully. Then I want you to take them out of the office with you and incorporate them in, into your life. Well, shall I uh, write them down? Well, it, if it makes you comfortable, it's just two words. Most we find most people can uh, can remember them. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yes. Okay. Here, here they are. Stop it! <laughs> I'm sorry. Stop it! Stop it! Yes. S T O P. New word. IT. So, what are you saying? <laughs> you, you know, it's funny. 
I, I, I say two simple words, and I cannot tell you the amount of people who say exactly the same thing you're saying. I mean, this, you know, this is not Yiddish, Catherine. This is English. Stop it. So I should just stop it. There you go. I mean, you, you, you don't want to go through life being scared of being buried alive in a box, do you? I mean, that sounds, sounds frightening. Yes. Then stop it. I can't. I mean, it's been with me no, since no, no, childhood. No, no, no. We, we, we don't go there. Just, just stop it. So I should just stop being afraid of being buried alive in a box. You got it. Good girl. Well, it's only been... It's only been three minutes, so that will be um, uh, three dollars. Uh, I, I only have a five, so... Well, I, I, don't, I don't make change. Then I, I guess I'll take the full five minutes. Fine. All right, well, what other uh, problems would you, would you like to address? <clears throat> uh, I'm bulimic. I stick my fingers down my throat. Stop it! <laughs> some kind don't don't do that but I, i'm compelled to my mom used to call me no no, no 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 we did we don't go there but i've been having this dream no we don't go there either but my horoscope did say we definitely don't go there just, <laughs> just stop it what 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 else well i have self-destructive relationships with men stop it <laughs> You, you want to be with a man, don't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, yes. Well, then stop it. <laughs> don't be such a big baby. I wash my hands a lot. That's all right. It is? I, I wash my hands all the time. There's a lot of germs out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't, don't, uh, don't worry about that one. <laughs> I'm afraid to drive. Well, stop it! <laughs> How are you going to get around? Get in the car and drive, you, you kook. Stop it! You stop it! You stop it! What's, what's the problem, Kathy? I, I don't like this. I don't like this therapy at all. You're just telling me to stop it. And, and, you, and you, don't, you don't like that? No, I don't. So you think we're... We're moving too fast, is that it? Yes. Yes, I do. All right, then let me, uh, let me uh, give you ten words that I, I think will uh, clear everything up for you. Uh, you, want, you want to get a pad and a pencil for this one? All right. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, here are the ten words. Stop it or I'll bury you alive in a box! That's, so that's the new coaching model, okay? So isn't that simple? When anybody you're talking to and they say silly stuff like that, what are you going to say to them? Stop it! Isn't it? What about ourselves? When we hear ourselves saying things maybe that aren't going to be helpful, what should we say to ourselves? Stop it! Okay, here's five questions. Guess where it starts? It starts with stop it, doesn't it? So these are the simple questions and you know the answers for yourself. Right. And I want you to take this away, I want you to do it as a regular exercise. You know, if you can do this once a month, that'll be fantastic. Ask yourself the question, what should I stop doing? Now, you know what that is, I don't need to ask you. When it comes to building your business, what is it you should stop doing? You know the answer, you don't need to voice it out loud, you, I know you can hear it in your head, right? What should you do less of that you're doing at the moment? You know the answer to that. What should you keep doing? What is it that works really well for you and you're doing it, you know how to do it, you should keep doing? And what should you do more of? What should you start doing that you're not doing at the moment? Isn't that so simple? I love simple stuff, I'm from Birmingham, you know, it's the way it works. So what should you stop doing? What should you do less of? What should you keep doing? What should you do more of and what should you start doing? Five simple questions. You see how that can keep us on track? Isn't that easy? Okay, let me see, is anybody prepared? I, if you are, please do. Anybody prepared to share what they're gonna stop doing? Anybody? Yeah, go on, you're nodding at me. What are we gonna stop doing? Uh, making excuses. 
Stop making excuses, okay? Because who are we making the excuses to? We know it, don't we? Yes. You're going to stop not talking to strangers. Okay, so you're going to start talking to strangers. So it's a start or a stop. Yes, fantastic stuff. Okay, so why not indeed? We're, unfortunately, we get this societal mindset, don't we, that tells us what we should do in life. And we've got to put, suspend judgment on that and be ourselves. Well, I'll give that away there so you can take it. So here we go then. Let's live our lives. Remember I said this one to you before. Let's live our lives as though all our dreams have come true and challenge reality to catch up. That's the actual expression, which I think is so true, isn't it? Let's talk about crossing the road. Yeah. What is it that we need in order to be able to cross the road effectively? And crossing the road is simply a metaphor for getting from where we are now to where we want to be in the future. Right? And it takes four things, and here they are. Right? And it's so simple. Right? It takes commitment. That's the first thing. It's committing that we're going to do it. In other words, we're saying, I am that type of person. Right? We make that commitment. Secondly, we then get the courage. Imagine standing on a road, because human beings are amazing people, aren't they? We are all amazing. There's a fast, busy road, traffic going both ways, and we are capable of doing that calculation of walking safely in between the traffic, doing it 30, 40 miles an hour, and we're able to do that. And then some people say they can't do maths. Just think of the calculation that takes to be able to do that. Once you make the commitment, you have the courage to do it. And once you have the courage to do it, then you've got the capabilities. You put one foot in front of the other and you keep going. And that gives you confidence. And it gives you confidence to do it the next time. Does that make sense? So commit to doing what needs to be done. You'll then find you have the courage to do it. As soon as you've committed, suddenly it clicks in. Then you realise you've got the capabilities, because we've all got the capabilities, and that breeds confidence. Confidence is simply the application of confidence. Is this making some sense? I hope it is. Okay. I have four sons. My youngest son smokes. And I said this to him recently, and I'm going to change the words for you as well. And I said to him, David, the day will come when you will give up smoking or the day will come when you wish you had. And it's your choice. And it's the same with wealth. The day will come when you'll decide to be wealthy, or the day will come when you wish you had decided to be wealthy. Isn't that true? And as we've seen Chris so eloquently explain with the 95% group and the 5% group, when they get to 65, dead or dead broke, basically. Yeah, simple as that. Why? Because they never decided. <laughs> They never made that decision that said, I am wealthy. And that's all it took, isn't it? I'm happy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wise. And if you make that decision today, then challenge reality to catch up. Because then you will walk, then you will talk, then you will act like a wealthy person. And what happens for that, people? They become wealthy. Because that's the way that works. You can't, you can't stop it happening. It's like Earl Nightingale said. He said, the world is like uh, a scales, like an old chemist scales. And in the one bowl, it's labelled rewards. And in the other bowl, is labelled service. And if you're looking in the rewards bowl and there's not enough in there, it's because we haven't put enough in the service bowl. It's ever so simple. So serve some more people, you get some more rewards. Don't try and stick more in the rewards bowl. It doesn't work that way. You've got to put it in the service bowl and the world will always balance it. And we know the truth of these old expressions, don't we? Because they are the truth, right? Are you choosing your future or are you simply recreating the past? So many people, they say, say they have 20 years experience. And when you talk to them in depth, you find they have one year's experience 20 times. They're just recreating the past. They're doing the same things again and again. And you know what's sad? They're surprised when their results are the same. <coughs> so we have to choose the future that we want. That's what separates people in this room, the people who turn up. That's what separates the entrepreneurs, the people who choose their future. They say, this is what the present is like. I want the future to be different and I'm prepared to do what it takes to get there. Here's a different way of thinking about your goals. Where are my time was? You're okay, 10 minutes ago. Am I? Okay, 10 minutes ago, okay, fantastic. Here's how to set, you'll never have seen this before. 
Here's how to set tutor goals, right? These are what successful people set. They don't have smart goals. They don't have specific, measurable, action-orientated, realistic, truthful goals. That's what not really successful people have. As, as a friend of mine says, they have outrageous, big, hairy goals. That's what they have. They have goals that are crazy, that other people would say are unrealistic, that are terrifying to think about, that are emotionally charged, but they can keep track. Yeah? So I'll pause while I know a lot of you are writing these down. This is a different way to think about it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. When I started in business in 1972, I started as a private investigator, tracing absconded debtors. And people said, you're crazy. You've got no experience. What do you think you're doing? Right? But that's usually when you know you're probably right, when everybody else says you're crazy. Right? So I found crazy goals are the ones that work. So within two years, we were being asked to trace 4,000 people a month. 4,000 people a month. And my clients looked like who's who, you know, Cadbury, Sweps, Career with Mossman, all the major companies that I went to and got them as clients because I was crazy enough to do it. And I sold that business to the staff. I then decided to get into the, investi uh, into the leasing business, uh, leasing, finance. And people said, you're crazy. The tax laws at the moment is just so against this. Five years later, we sold the business for four million pounds, right? Then I decided to do writing and recording and all the stuff I do today. People said, you're crazy. It's only Americans that do that, right? You have to be an American to record for Nightingale Conan, right? Well, obviously not, obviously not. So if you've got people in your life who are saying you're crazy being in this business, yeah, that's the way it should be. Because you're supposed to have crazy goals. Have the ones that the 95% think are crazy. The 5% actually don't think they're crazy. But you understand what I'm saying about this. Unrealistic, we don't have realistic goals. That's boring, right? We want unrealistic goals. Stuff that challenge us to be the very best we can be. You know, get every single, have you got, you don't have to tell me the numbers, everybody in this room got a financial goal, yeah? If you haven't, you need a financial goal. You need something just to aim at, okay? So I'm not gonna ask you what the number is, but please write down, you can write it under your hand, how much money you wanna earn. Remember, you can't make money, only the mint makes money. We have to earn money by providing service, don't we? Write down your financial goal for the next 12 months. Just write it down. I'm not gonna ask you what the number is. Okay, just write it down. Okay. If you don't know where you're going, all the roads lead there. Isn't that true? Yeah, so true. I live in Birmingham, you know, go down to Spaghetti Junction. If you don't make some good decisions, you end up in Manchester. We actually end up in Stoke instead of, <laughs> instead of London. I mean, who'd want to go to Stoke, for heaven's sake? <laughs> okay, you've got your written goal down. Now add a naught. At the back end, not the front end, okay? Add a note at the back end. So if it was 100,000, now it's a million. If it was 50,000, now it's half a million. Do you think you'll think differently with that bigger target? He says, a famous presenter in America, you may not know his name, his name's Doug Weed. He said, most people are so busy earning 50,000 a year, they'll never earn 100,000. Isn't that true? They're so busy earning 50,000, they'll never earn 100,000. It takes that different mindset. It takes the 5% mindset, not the 95% mindset. And once you add that zero to your goals, you'll come up with ideas to achieve it you would never have dreamed of at the lower figure. Because the mind, once stretched, never regains its original dimensions. Okay. So, are you spending your time or are you investing your time? Most people not the people in this room, but most people spend their time. They spend it watching TV. Thank you, Van, for your comment earlier, right? They spend it doing stuff that is just crazy way of spending your life. Instead of investing their time. Investing it in themselves, in their families, in their learning. Not just learning, but investing their time, not just spending time. Here's a little thing I'd like to share with you. This is really powerful. Um, I'm sure most have got a smartphone of some description, right? 
is mine. On here, there is a little thing, little app here. It's called Good Habits. Good <coughs> Habits. That's all it is. Anybody know it? No, it's Good Habits. It's free. You can free to can download it. Right, there's mine. Okay. And there's mine that I use. So Good Habits. There's a guy I know who teaches speed reading. So I've been through his program. It's online. I've learned how to do it. I used to read fairly quickly anyway, but I've managed to up my reading speed. I was reading to about 350 words a minute. The average is about 175. So I was always a quick reader because I read a lot. Using this program for just a couple of weeks, I'm now reading at plus 700 words a minute, which is quick. 700 words a minute. And that's for commercial books, not just novels, for commercial books. With novels, I'm up in the 900-ish. And with high retention, by the way, just so you know. And I made a promise because he asked me to on his program to practice for one minute a day. And I thought, what a fantastic idea. Making a promise to yourself you'll do something for one minute a day. Because when you do one minute, it usually turns into more than one. But if the promise is only just a minute a day. So would you have one minute a day? Would you promise yourself one minute a day to work on your business? Yes. Would you promise yourself one minute a day to do a call? Yes. Or would you promise to make one call in a day? Do you understand how powerful this is, having little simple things where you promise to do just one every day? To give you an idea of how nuts I am. Right? So this is my list here. So meditation. I meditate. I've got meditation too because I meditate later in the day. I write a journal every day at the start of the day. There's a Jim Rohn. We all know Jim Rohn, don't we? Jim, Jim Rohn said, never finish the day, sorry, never start the day till it's finished on paper. Yeah? So you write the day and you focus on the day. I write left-handed, I'm actually right-handed, but I write left-handed every day just to try and balance my head. I learn Spanish every day, I do speed reading every day, I check my language, I record my weight, all this. I mean, it's just so simple, just a list of things just to keep me on track. And all the promises is one minute. What would you promise to do for one minute that you know would take you forward in your business? Just one minute. By the way, drinking wine doesn't count. It's not, well, yeah. well, no, it does. It counts as well. But you, you've got the idea. Okay, fabulous stuff. So here is the freedom formula. I said I'd talk briefly about freedom. I'm going to do this in my five minutes more. Okay, good. Right. There's two different freedoms. There's negative freedom and there's positive freedom. Is it me or is it warm in here? It is warm in here, isn't it? Yeah, is the, can we have the air con on again? Yeah, would you mind? Yeah, make it just a bit cooler. Yeah, okay. There's freedom from and there's freedom to. And when we're really young, we are low on both of these. We don't have freedom from doing anything because our lives are totally controlled and we don't have freedom to do things because our parents say what we can and can't do, what we can and can't do. As we become teenagers, we get high freedom from, right? Because we know now what we don't want but we're still not sure what we do want. So we run around having lots of sex, drinking lots of booze, you know, generally having a good time in life. Right? But as we get older, we start to get more knowledge about the freedom to do stuff, right? not just freedom from. Until when we become fully formed adults, we realize what we don't want and we realize what we do want. And when you've got clarity, remember this word we've used before? When, thank you. When we've got total clarity on what we don't want and what we do want, life gets easier. Because you don't waste time, you don't spend time on the wrong thing. So I would urge you to take this idea away and say to yourselves, what is it you don't want in your life? You know, people talk about do lists. Let's have a don't list. <laughs> yeah? Let's have a list of stuff we don't do, that we've got clarity on what we don't want and we've got clarity on where we're going as well. And then life gets so much easier. I could talk about that for a long time. So, people want freedom for this. They want freedom of time, freedom of money, freedom of relationships, and freedom of purpose. When you've got that, you have a business and a life of choice. Note what comes first, freedom of time. In other words, you're not tied to a job. You have total choices about what you do, when you do it, how you do it, who you do it with. Right? Because that is just so important in life, isn't it? Then we have freedom of money. We can spend what we want when we want it. You know, you want a new car, you go and get one. Right? You want another holiday, you go have one. 
freedom of relationships, you decide who you want to deal with. Right? You know, don't deal with idiots. There's, there's no time in life. I say stronger than normally, don't deal with tossers. Right? It's just not worth it, is it? It's just crazy to spend your life dealing with the wrong people and mixing with the wrong people. And freedom of purpose. Why are we here? What are we doing it for? Okay, lastly then, this. Two big problems that beset our success. Perfectionism and procrastination. Forever trying to get it right before we take action. You know, it's ready, fire, aim. It's, okay, you're going to hit the wrong target occasionally. So what? All we're doing is learning. And if you're just going to try and put stuff off all the time, it's just never going to happen. Successful people say good enough is good enough, and now is the time. Does this make some sense? Yes. You, let me ask you this question. Out of everything I've talked about the last 45 minutes or so, what's the one key thing you've learnt because you didn't know it, or you've relearned it because you did know it, but it's something you went, wow, I'm going to take that away and use it? If I point at you, tell me what that answer is. What's the one key thing you've learnt, you've relearned, or you've gone, wow, I'm going to take that away and use it? Yes. Cutter. Say again. Cutter. Cuter. Cuter goals. Cuter goals. <laughs> Stop less, keep more smart. Lovely. The five key questions. What shall I stop doing? What shall I do less of? What shall I keep doing? What shall I do more of? What shall I start doing? Yes. One minute a day. Commit one minute a day. Plus. Commit one minute a day. Decide on the things you can just do for one minute. You can do anything for one minute, can't you? Surely. Yes. Fan. Take it. There's been several things there because, as you know, I was one of your Indeed. students. Indeed. And a lot of things are just shooting through my head. Okay. You know, a lot of things. Fabulous stuff. One thing? I am. I am. Yes, I am. The words you used after I am program your identity. So please be very, very careful with your identity. Yes. Teacher, you were going to give me a thousand pounds. <coughs> A thousand pounds. No, you were going to give me the thousand pounds. I was going to give you the cheap, tra the expensive tray. Right. No, it's interesting actually, the four C's, uh, crossing from one end to the next, courage, commitment, commitment. Fantastic. Okay. Crossing the road. Okay, so make sure that you are committed to that. Look guys, it's always a pleasure to come and see you. It's always a pleasure to share these ideas. I so look forward to spending more time with you. Thank you so much. reason why you should be listening to the Achievers Edge every day. It makes sense, doesn't it? Now, a, lot of the, a lot of what we just talked about is on there, but you, you know, you get there every month, but there's a, probably 14, 15 months of back stuff that you can go into. So, you can either make money or you can make excuses, but you can't make both. And if you keep saying you've got no time to listen to it, then guess what, you're right. But you, it's you deciding not to listen to it. Okay, everything's about decisions, yeah? But sometimes we need a little push, don't we? Okay, and what you're gonna start doing is you're gonna start, some people say, some people come to me sometimes and they say, oh, I need a kick up the backside. Yeah, as though my job is to kick them up the backside. Okay, now I've got a real good, and I've just thought of this actually, because somebody taught it me years ago. Um, I've got a real good kick up the backside technique. Hold on a second. What's this to you? I need a lead. Can you just give me a lead? He's going to sort out a lead. So this is, you can have your own personal kick up the backside technique. You probably have one at home, but it doesn't have to be a lead. It's got to be quite a lot. Oh, that's good. Okay. So anything like this, a, a long, a long belt. Okay. <coughs> Any, anything like this does. All you have to do is, you have to make a, a little tiny sort of loop in the end of it. Okay. And then what you do is, you, you put it on your foot, like that, and you put this over your shoulder, okay? And that way you can do, you can keep kicking yourself up the back side. <laughs> <laughs> so, be quite cheap. It's a, it's a do-it-yourself, kick yourself up the back side technique, yeah, that anybody can use, okay? I use one often, and I've got it at home, and sometimes I kick myself up the back side every day. But I'd rather kick myself up the backside than somebody else do it or kick you up. Does that make sense? No. But sometimes we do need the push. Because we haven't got the most it's like Peter's just said about crossing the road. You've got to step off the pavement, haven't you? Now, I haven't got a problem with crossing the road, no matter how busy the road is. Because I trust myself. Does that make sense? My wife doesn't trust me. 
So she doesn't like crossing the road, especially if it's with me. She'd rather wait there for 20 minutes and wait for there be no cars. Okay. Well, it doesn't happen in London. Same. <laughs> Does, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Now, van is obviously, yeah, a step off the road kind of person, and you obviously aren't, okay, because of the danger that you see. So that's based on fear. Does that make sense? I mean, I want to go see the poppies yesterday, yeah, but it was the other side of the road. So, I, I mean, my wife wanted to go see the poppies, but she didn't want to cross the road. Now, getting across London Bridge ain't the easiest thing in the world, is it? Especially if you don't want to go. Plus, my wife's got a bit of a bad leg, so she's got that to concern herself with. But eventually, she, she'll come with me. Because based on the principle that the car would rather not hit you. Because they wouldn't. Okay, but if you don't step off, you never get across. Right? Mm -hmm. you, you never get across. So you've got to do that, and that's exactly what Peter's telling you. That's exactly what Van's step. You've got to make that step. So there was a guy, he was a millionaire, multi-millionaire, and he got, he got a daughter, okay? And his daughter was a bit of a, a, a daddy's girl, do you know what I mean? She'd never been working, this, that, and the other. And he decided it was time to marry her off. So he had a big party in one of his mansions, and he got many mansions. And in this mansion, he got a swimming pool, and over the swimming pool, there was a big marquee, okay, a big tent. And above it was a crane with a piece of rope. So the proceedings were going on, and it was his daughter's 21st birthday, and everybody came to the party, and he invited all the eligible single gentlemen, all the bachelors, you know what I mean? And at the end of it, getting to the end of the birthday party, he got a microphone out, and he said, listen, he says, any of you single gentlemen, I've got a task for you. And he pulled the tent off the swimming pool. And in the swimming pool, there was piranhas, there was crocodiles, there was vipers, there was, there was every kind of possible horrible fish you could think of was in the pool. And he said, any man who jumps in that swimming pool and swims from one end of the pool to the other can have this house, this mansion, four million pounds in the bank, and the hand of my daughter in marriage. And no sooner had he said, it, splash, <laughs> this guy's in the pool. And he's swimming like this, and the alligator oh. took his toe off, and yeah, yeah, yeah. put on, he's got a bit of his ear, and he's got an eel up his nose, and he's like, he's like this, and he's getting away, and there's blood all over the place, and he looks like something like one of those Halloween characters I saw last night. In one of the, <laughs> and he gets out to the other side of the pool, and he's sitting on the side of the pool, and he's going, because <laughs> he's out of breath. <laughs> And the father runs up, he says, that was fantastic, he says, I never thought anybody did, that was fantastic. He says, you're really brave, what do you want, what do you want, do you want the house, do you want my wife, what do you want, with my daughter, what do you want, want? want, he says, tell me what you want, tell me what you want, he said, I want, I want, I want, he says, tell me what you want, tell me what you want, he says, I want, I want the person that pushed me in. <laughs> Because he was, and everybody was scared. I learned this a long time ago. A long time ago. There's only two emotions. One of them's love, and one of them's fear. And anything else is sort of either one way or the other. So you'll either be too scared to show somebody this business, or you'll love them enough to show them. Does that make sense? So if you're coming from your heart, yeah? and you show it to them, for them, there's a good chance they'll join you, if they've got the courage that you've got. If you show them from your pocket, okay, and it's just for you, so that you can make some money, the chances are they won't do it. Now, Peter just went on about a financial goal. I used to have financial goals. Now my financial goals are based on these, okay? Because I've chosen, <coughs> Only just to keep enough money in the bank now that I need. And with the rest of it, I've got this and gold. That's my choice. Okay? And that's my choice. So all you've got to say to yourself is, how many of these do you want to own? The gold. Yes, sir. See, Peter just bought the gold one. Second time I want some money off it. 
Somebody's nicked it. <laughs> okay. So my goal is, how many of these do I want to own, and how many of these do I want to own? Then I've got something that's measurable. Does that make sense? <laughs> so you decide what it is for you. If it's ten of them and one of them, that's fine. Put a note on the end. If it's a hundred of them and ten of them, that's fine. Put a note on the end. If it's a thousand of them and a hundred of them, that's fine. Put a note on the end. If it's ten thousand of them and a thousand of them, that's fine. Put a note on the end. Does that make sense? Because once you've got them, you've got them. If you don't give somebody a twenty pound note for that, what happens to the twenty pound note? If you don't give somebody eight hundred pounds for that, what happens to the eight hundred pounds? So this is here to protect you, in my view. Okay, in my view, it's here to protect you. I don't see it as spending. Okay, and it's there for you for your future. And the more of them you get, the more secure you feel, and the safer you feel. Okay. Now I want you to own some of these, but I don't want you to own some of these. <coughs> I want you to own some of these for you. And you've got to start somewhere. Okay? Now, I buy these in 500s at a time. Okay, it's called a monster box. Okay? Oh, from ISN? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what you've got to do with ISN, just go on the website, there's a number for the bullion department, phone them up, tell them what you want, and they'll give you a price on the day. And I don't, you, you won't, you, I, 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 there's never been a time when they haven't, when they haven't beat the market. Because they're not there, the bullion isn't there for us to make for us ISN to make money out of you. The, it's there for you to be able to buy bullion without being ripped off. <coughs> okay? So if you want one of these today, you can have one for twenty quid. To start you off. Okay? There's only there's only forty, and maybe maybe ten of you don't want one, maybe twenty one, maybe forty of you don't want one. Davidson's in charge. He's the cashier. Okay, so we're going to wrap up now, and if you want one, it's there, the 20 quid, go and buy one. But it's a start, isn't it? Yeah. Understand, you've got to start somewhere. And understand the difference between the bullion coin and the numismatic yeah. coin. That's one of the things it's important that you understand. And if you're new here for the first time and you don't fully understand that, somebody in your upline has got a video to explain it to you. Okay? Because it's important that you see that video. There's a difference between a numismatic coin and a bullion coin. Mm -hmm. What you get when you pay you 125 mm -hmm. is you get all this, you get access to the training, you get access to the education, you get access to the Achievers Edge, you get access to all the meetings, you've got all your websites, you get all the bonuses, all the commissions are paid out to that 125. Okay, and you get an MS69 coin included in that package to allow you to earn money, to allow you to go and purchase whatever you want to purchase. If you think you know, but, but buying art is, is a thing for you, go and buy art. Okay? If you think antique cars, anti, antique furniture is a thing for you, go and buy some antique furniture. But whatever you do, <coughs> make sure you turn as much of this stuff into as much solid stuff as fast as, possible, as you possibly can. I used to have a, I used to have a big, a really big office, a really big <coughs> office, pool, a pool table, a snooker table. Not to brag, it was a nice office, but it was, it was, it, there was all sorts of stuff in there. And I thought, I don't need this. I don't need this. So we downsized the premises and I got all this stuff left. So I've got a lot of, load of wood and glass and plastic in this room and I sold it all and turned it into this. Mm -hmm. Like alchemy. You go home. I bet you can find something you can put in the newspaper and sell for 20 quid and get yourselves... I haven't finished yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> get yourselves one of that. Okay. You might have something you can stick on eBay that's worth 800 quid and get yourself one of them. You understand me? If you want them, you can get them. If you think about your life in the past, whatever you've put your mind on, you've owned. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Whatever you've put your mind on, you've had. Sometimes you have to put your mind on something big enough. Because your mind will get you whatever you put it on. Be good or bad or indifferent. Okay? So, that's Peter's gold coin now. Davison's got the 
Or the coins, so if you want one. I'm going to start off because it was a granddaughter's birthday a couple of days ago, so I'm going to get you go. So, how much is the pack? You, you can't have the pack, it's not fair to everybody. You have to the pack before 400 quid, you know, so we're not going to sell the pack. I just want to get you started. And that's what I do with people. You know what I give my, you know, my kids and grandkids for Christmas? Silver coins. See that? She's, she's got her eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, no problem, no problem. So, my wife's birthday, yeah, was, what day is it? The first, on the 30th, so two days ago, yeah. So she's in London with me, do you know what I mean? We're having a bit of fun while we're, while we're in London, this, that, the other. And I gave her five gold coins. Wow. I could either go buy another handbag, or five gold coins. She don't, you know. Because it's there, isn't it? What's the point of buying some plastic or some wood or, or whatever it is? There's just there's just no point. So do yourself a favour, get your mind immersed in this stuff. Start realising what it is. You know, realising what it is. The staff, the staff that we're going to try and sell. What is the birthday? You already given? So the point. So the point. We want you to face <coughs> Yeah, I'm ever so sorry. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really weird because when, it, yeah, it's uh, so we're going to have to change this room because it's not good for this kind of thing. Yes. Because you like this all the time. We've always got to have you back for something. So I promise you now, we're never going to have another meeting like this in this room ever. Okay, if you guys want to want to go seriously, ever, it's just not going to happen here again. Okay, because it's disrespectful to anybody that's sitting there. Okay. Other things that we need to know for the future uh, is kids, really, we, we can't have kids in these meetings because we're, go, we're going to video them. Do you understand me? So when kids, I mean, okay. I mean obviously this, this guy's okay. doing fantastic, he's brilliant, you can come anytime soon. <laughs> but it's, it's usually young babies when they cry, you can't, you can't control them. And what it means is, and I hope you'll understand this, we might have three hours of video in that's really good, and we have to go through it all just because there's a noise in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we have to, so that holds that video back for you. Do you understand me? Because we could probably get it out in a couple of days if we didn't have to video it. Sorry, if we didn't have to edit it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's just little things like that that we're going to be doing in the future, but I can promise you we won't be having another meeting like this in this room for the reason. So thank you for that. Well done, mate. Cool. So you've got a good team about you, you've got some good leaders in the business. Who's gold? Who's got, who's got a Mercedes? Am I just standing? Got a Mercedes Benz? Stand up. Okay, stand up. Okay. These guys, these guys have all done a Mercedes. So you've all got you've all got leaders in here that are going to be well in the business. Baba, Baba, come here, mate. Most of you in this room, I'm assuming, will probably be in, in Baba's group. If you're not in Baba's group, mate, that doesn't matter because he's, he's, he's welcome to help people. Bab, Baba's one of the top earners in the business, if, if not the top earner. So I don't know if you want to say a few words. Hello. It's another opportunity for us men that have not been in this business. Maybe this is your first time, or maybe you've been in the business and you would not be in this such a meeting listening to Chris and Peter Thompson. And in all our meeting we've been doing, I've been encouraging a lot of us, let's go to our back office, let's listen to the Achievers Edge. There are a lot of information to build our business. Believe you me, no matter how experienced you are, as Peter Thompson said, in networking, you can't do it on your own. It's a teamwork. It's just a teamwork. And without you coming for meetings, <coughs> listening to people that have achieved in it, I mean, rubbing minds together, you will just be alone. And it's going to be as if it's not working. And everything about ISN, as we've been saying, is not about you investing in things that is perishable, in things that's going to expire. This is a lifetime investment for you as an individual. It's not really about the bands. I've changed the mindset of four, most of my downlines mm -hmm. that are good directors and above. When you are trying to explain ISN, it's not really about the bands. The bands is just a plus. Mm -hmm. Let them understand that by swapping the paper money and the silver, 
This the paper money you can spend in Starbucks, you can spend in McDonald's. But what you are keeping in assets, you can't spend it there. That is just it. And once they get that understanding, the bends will come. And even though the bends doesn't come, they know they are saving their money in something tangible. Thank you very much. This man's got a story, okay? It's a very, very impressive story. I, had, I didn't hear it today, the first time in Creedon. So he's, and don't forget the other. <laughs> that's, that's the most <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ola. I'm happy to be here. And for those of you that are here for the first time, uh, this a uh, wonderful opportunity in the business. I tell people I was somewhere yesterday and I was trying to tell them the kind of lifestyle I live now and they said it shows <laughs> what they are seeing now. <laughs> <laughs> what they saw that they said it shows, I don't know, but I just, <laughs> I told them I, for so many years, I, I was brought up to believe what you become in life is based on your education. And because of that, as a young kid, I went, I was uh, not, I was privileged, I would say, I went to boarding school. And I've always been on the goal to make sure I have a lot of certificates. So I did first degree agricultural economics. I did a master's degree in public at me at 22. I was the youngest when I was doing my master's. That was back home in Nigeria. I came here uh, in the late 90s. I was uh, impressed upon that, oh, because your degrees are foreign, you have to start all over. So I decided to do MCSC, Microsoft Certified Engineers. I became, I worked for the underground, for, you know. So as I'm standing before you, four university degrees. I'm doing oil and gas at the moment. And also I was told the highest paid job, one of the best jobs to do in this country is to become a train driver. And I was told there are not a lot of black people. So I went after it. I became a train driver, started driving the train, 60 grand a year. I realized it's still not enough. But as much as I was pursuing the, the degree, I knew I have to come off that rubbish, all these nine to five arrangements. And so I was on the goal for some, for something that would make me free so that I can, you know? So I caught this some concept. But before then, I, I shared that Croydon. This system in this country, a lot of us, we are here, we live here, we have not sat down to understand the system around us. The structuring is, is this is your employer. You get paid from him. All other things will start knocking on the door to take out of what you have just collected. So that's your EDF. That's your council tax there. Sky. <laughs> uh, what are <laughs> you? Rent. 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 By the time you get here, the way, the, what I took from him is finished. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So now, what kicks in is your credit card. <laughs> yeah? And your overdraft. So you start from this point credit card, overdraft. That's what you start spending to take you back to this guy, isn't it? <laughs> So when you, after the next month, you collect the same thing from this guy, then you get here because you can't get back here again. Because you have to pay interest on the card, you pay interest on the overdraft. Am I making sense? Yes. So because of those factored two things, you can't get back to the original plane. So you are, back, you are here now. So then the credit card, then that's when you, have you not noticed when you call your bank that can they increase your overdraft? They will say no, but they would rather increase the car, credit card. So that what you pay, it's business, it's, 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 it's mindset. From my experience in law, it has been established that 
tax avoidance and tax evasion are different, but it's the same act. Yeah, it's the same thing you have done, but it's the way it is defined. Ari Redknapp, during his legal case, that when he was first month manager, he did not declare some money. He said, I've not been to uni. It is what the accountants told me. <laughs> and at the end of the day, the judge presiding the matter said he has not done anything criminal. He said what he has done, he has used his brain, so he has avoided tax, but he has not evaded tax. If you evade tax, it's criminal, you'll be sent to jail. But if you avoid tax, you are smart. So what? what come on, guys. <laughs> I joined this business in January this year. I, I went to a program because a lot of us, they don't invest, people don't invest in education. That's the problem. So, because if he, the investment is here, when I'm telling you about this business, you will cash it like fire. Because I'm just trying to turn you up. But you say too much, and I tell people in my team, you there is so much to say. And there are some questions you can get asked. That question will be the swinging deciding factor. If you have answered it wrongly, I, will, I went to a program. They said, well, this is not what we were told. And the person that told them was sitting there. I said, no, I don't know what she has told you. But this is the business. And everybody, all of them, that day, they all joined the business. And she was happy, she said, I put something in my mouth. I said, I have not put anything in my mouth. I've just shown them the way I've been shown. You see, this business is very straightforward. Don't add anything to it. Learn from the masters. The way they have presented it, just replicate it. If you replicate, I tell my people, if you do what I do, you will get what I've got. The result of better results. In eight months, I became an executive in this mm. business. Wow. So, uh, when people say, oh, maybe they lie, lying about the bonuses, I say, well, I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> 35 grand. I said it when uh, Vincent, and uh, when I saw it, that when you become a, an executive, you get $25,000. A lot of you, some of you might not believe it, but I'm getting it. <laughs> Are you, am I making sense? Yes. And guys, nine holidays between April and now. When I was earning 60K a year, I can't go on any holiday. Even if I have the money to go, I have to get approval from the, yeah, yeah, yeah. From no, the real course. company. And they will say, no, we are short of drivers. You can't go anywhere. <laughs> you see, that's the freedom we're talking about. Yes. Even you have the money, you are still subjected to somebody's dictating how you live your life. You see, you don't have time for the kids, you don't have time for the missus, you don't, everything is up in the head. Guys, you need, as he said, you have to decide. One hour of your day, or two hours, it's up to you. It's delay, you lie your bed, you you sleep on it. So, this is my life. It's, I don't do any other thing, some of you know. I send this my life and I wake up, I sleep, I do everything. Well, I send. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs>
The point is that what the, the time it take me will be different from the time we will take him. So the time we take the other person will be different. But the point is that everybody is in the business. There is commitment to the business. Within by by March or so, I became an executive. So I was first. Okay. So that was in five four months. I became an executive in the business. So I will encourage everyone that what it takes in this business is courage, determination, and faith. I told someone last week, I said, if anybody decides to leave this business, I'm staying on because I know my destiny has changed. I told the pastor today, Pastor Williams is here. I told him if everybody, since I joined ISM just a year now, I know how many silver I have saved. So that is the point. Your, a time will come, ladies and gentlemen, I will say that. A time will come when the price of what we always say, one uh, Robert Kiyosaki always talk about the price of silver going up with all the facts eventually. People will start crying, how many authorship did you do? And I forgot to do authorship. I didn't do two. I mean, just did three in a year because within that year, you haven't done enough authorship. So you have enough wealth you've created. Uh, do you get that joke? Yeah. Oh, yes. And that's the point. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to start saving in tangible assets. The black community you must wake up. <laughs> the white community you must wake up. All community wake up to this life changing, I call it a movement. Mm. It is a revolution. Or to be able to see from the point of a revolution, a movement, you will not do anything about it. Because they will look, let's go what I call a wet transfer. It's about to happen. So as many that will plug into this movement, they will experience that wet transfer. But if you don't want to plug into it, I need somebody to clean my shoes head again when I'm all done. <laughs> so you decide what to do. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what this business is about. Okay? This is, this is what it's about. It's about wealth, it's about information, and it's about fun. Can you feel that? Yep. We need to have fun. What's your saying, Pete? Creating wealth with a serious, what is it? Fun? Having, yes, having fun with a serious intent. Having fun with a serious intent. Yes. It's not a job. We're not your bosses. We're not here to tell you the mistakes you made. We're not here to tell you what you're doing right. We're not here to tell you what you're doing wrong. These guys are here to show you that it can be done. And every one of them will tell you if they can do it, you can do it. The only difference is, is the faith. And that's a word that you probably all use, but very few people actually live. Because commitment is faith. Because if you've got the faith to walk across the road, you'll walk. Now the truth is this. It's easy to have faith in a company like ISF. It's easy to have faith in gold and silver. It's easy to have faith in the people who are making the money that are helping you. The question is, have you got the faith in you? You've got to like yourself, you've got to love yourself, you've got to respect yourself, and you've got to have the faith in yourself. And when that happens, it works for you. We've all enjoyed speaking to you. I'd like to thank all the speakers. Everybody's done a fantastic job.